everybody, welcome back into Body Time. Harry McCullough here. It is National Fire Prevention Week, and here to talk about that is Mark Stevenson. Uh, he's a training officer at the Homewood Fire Department, so uh, thanks so much for being here. Uh, you know, I, I thought you were talking about, hey, it hadn't rained here in a month and a half, six weeks. we got to do some fire prevention. Right. This is actually a national week that happens every year. It is. It is a national week. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it hasn't rained here in quite some time, and that, that is concerning, but... Uh, no, this, this week has been a National Fire Prevention Week through NFPA uh, for 100 years. This is actually the 100th anniversary uh, in, in uh, 1871. It stems from 1871 in October, the, 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 the great Chicago fire. Um, NFPA was formed after that. They made some, a lot of rule changes and things like that. Um, but uh, President Calvin, Calvin Coolidge in, I think, 1925... Uh, established Fire Prevention Week, a national holiday. It's, it, uh, I think it's the, the, the longest running public safety observance in the history of the United States um, of National uh, Fire Prevention Week. And it, it all stems from the Great Chicago Fire, um, where you know, everybody knows the story. Miss O'Leary's cow kicked over a lamp and it started a fire. And, you know, it, that story can't be confirmed, um, but it, 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 the, the fire did start there. Um, it, it killed 300 people. Uh, over 100,000 were left homeless, and I think it burned, it says 17,400 different structures and burned 2,000 acres of land. You can imagine starting uh, over from that. Before they yeah. cut it out, right. right. So, I mean, a lot of changes happen, you know, from that. I mean, every, every city is built today from, from what they learned then, you know. Uh, cities are divided into blocks. There's streets, and everything's divided off, and those are built as fire bricks, fire prevent, right. you know. So it, everything, you know, the things we don't think about today were put into effect back then, for fire prevention, and we still have to practice fire prevention today. So, you know, this week and, and typically this month, nationwide, uh, fire departments go out, we do fire prevention. We stick with the schools and we schools stick with fire prevention. And uh, it's just it's kind of a safety conscious month to, to drill in fire drills and home safety and, and, and things of that nature. Yeah. And, and it's funny. We we used to always do stop, drop and roll, those kind of things. But I guess now the prevention's built in to the buildings now, uh, sprinkler systems, uh, fire retardant, different things like that. So where are we in fire prevention now in, in 2020? Right, so we're still teaching kids stop, drop, and roll. You know, there's another step. Everybody knows stop, drop, and roll. There's one more step to that. It's stop, drop, cover your face, and roll. You know, you don't want your clothes to come off and burn your face. So we get them to cover their face first. That's that's something we're sticklers for to make sure that, that everybody understands that because that's an important part. Um, you don't want to burn their lungs or eyes and, and things of that nature. But yeah, I mean, fire prevention and building codes is one thing, but we go more, uh, maybe even home, you know, having families do fire prevention drills or having fire escape drills, you know. Uh, one of the things that they're, they're doing um, is fire escape, uh, a plan for fire escape. You know, smaller kids, sure. you know, trying to have two ways out. If I can't get out the door because there's a fire on the other side of the door, there's heat on the other side of the door, can they go to a window? Do they know how to open a window? Are they big enough to open the window, right? Or how do they, if they can't, how do they stop the fire from maybe coming underneath the door or how do they seal the door up to give us enough time to be able to get in and get them out, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's, we're going to the schools and we're doing all different kinds of things, whether it's just safety of teaching kids to stop, drop, and roll, um, how to check a door to make sure it's not, there's no fire on the other side, um, tools and toys, things that they are allowed to touch, things that they aren't allowed to touch, you know, reminding them that they shouldn't go up to the stove and, and, and touch a pot. You know, they don't know what's in it. It might be hot. They dump some boiling water on them. There's going to be a whole different outcome. And that's not something that they're going to, they're going to be changed forever. Right. You know, they're going to get burnt and it's going to be changed in forever. So we're, we're educating them. Then we start before pre-K, we started daycares. We go to daycares and do that training all the way up through fifth, sixth, seventh grade, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it carries on into adulthood. You know, there are fire drills in buildings that people, you know, right. everybody has to get up. Everybody hears a fire alarm in school and they get their stuff and they go outside. But they understand that, you know, when you're talking about 3,000 people in a building, everybody has to be accounted for. Right. And if not, we have to go find those people. Do you still have to do drills like that in buildings and, and businesses at once a year or whatever? Yep. So there's different rules, right? So uh, one of the things that we know for sure that the schools, uh, fire marshal's office puts out guidance for schools. Uh, they have to do a, a, a drill once a month. Um, and they have to make documentation of it, and the fire department and the fire marshal's office can come in and, and reference that material and, and see when they did it, who did it, how many people participated. Um, it's encouraged for all buildings to do that. You know, does everybody know where their fire escape plan is? And having two ways out, right? So, I mean, the fire alarm goes off in a building, and you go have to go downstairs. But what happens if there's smoke coming up, down, up those stairs? Mm -hmm. Do you know the other way out? Right. You know, some people don't know that. You know, it, something as simple as, as, as a high school. You know, they got they, they use this set of stairs for five, six years and teachers for 20 years. 
they forget in that moment where the where other back upstairs are. are, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's having those drills and making sure they go through them. Yeah, I, was at, I used to work at the World Trade Center down in New Orleans. <laughs> and every year we'd have to walk down. We were at the 28th floor. Right. We'd have to walk down. Some yeah. people were huffing and puffing. They don't like it when the <laughs> elevators go down to the ground floor. They don't want you to use elevators because, you know, they may malfunction uh, or open up on the floor. It, it is good. All right, this time of year, so let's talk about what's happening now. we got about a minute left. Uh, it, it really hadn't rained. We might get some rain tomorrow, but it, it's been six weeks. Yep. Should we be taking precautions now? Right. So, yeah, it, it's, it's the fire marshal hasn't enacted any type of uh, burn ban uh, statewide or even within the parish. But it, he is encouraging folks to remember that the humidity is super low. It hasn't rained in weeks. Right. There have been a few deaths in the state since January where people have started maybe small bonfires. It spreads. They go to sleep. It catches their house on fire and they want to die in a fire. Right. So they're encouraging folks not to do burning, any type of burning, even if it's just uh, 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 tree branches and things like that. You're not allowed to burn debris, right? right? So it's just tree branches and limbs, but he's encouraging them not to do that until we start getting some, some wetter or more uh, humid weather to be able to protect the fire spread. We're not allowed to burn debris? You are not allowed to burn debris. So you're only allowed to burn- um, Like from a hurricane? Nope. Or so it, though, anything that's processed, Sorry. Anything, <laughs> anything that's processed, any type of wood, it, only you. natural material is allowed to be burned. I got you. Uh, so yeah, it's that time of year and we'll be seeing fires, you know, they'll be burning sugar cane and that kind of stuff. Yep, so. so, And that's the thing. They know that the sugar cane farmers are going to start burning too. Right. So the smoke's going to be in the air. All right. So yeah, a lot of stuff. Well, Mark, thank you, man. We appreciate it. Great to know the history behind uh, fire prevention. Right. I appreciate it, Ms. McCullough. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back with more body time right after this.